In 2015, climate change and water shortages have been headline news all up and down Western North America. In the south coast of British Columbia, there was significantly reduced snowpack, and by July, many communities were entering severe restrictions on water use. This included Metro Vancouver, where summer water restrictions haven't been common. This type of summer drought is a pattern expected to be more frequent with climate change. So with water conservation, we really need to highlight the why. And in southern coastal BC, there's key reasons why we need to conserve water. First of all, it's the timing. So when are we getting our water? When are we experiencing rain events? Well, it's not distributed evenly throughout the seasons. We're getting significant rains in the winter months, and with climate change, uh, we're expected to see more intense short duration storms. But then when it comes to the summer months, we're seeing longer dry spells, uh, where we can go about four months without any significant rainfall. So the distribution of water isn't evenly spread throughout the year. And so our demand for water factors in when the summer months, we have more of a need to use water, whether that be for outdoor irrigation, you know, people using it for swimming pools and washing cars and all of that. But that doesn't relate with when we get our water. So that's why we have to look towards water conservation and specifically focusing on outdoor water conservation. Because when we have the highest demand for water, we have the least amount of water coming in naturally to our systems. In drier areas, like the islands and Sunshine Coast, water use in the spring was really high and the water shortage problem became severe by midsummer. So my name's Mark LaBelle and uh, I'm the area director here in Roberts Creek on the We have uh, limited natural uh, surface water storage capacity here on the Sunshine Coast. We're a long and thin community squeezed in between the mountains and the sea. Um, and if you look at a map, you don't see the large lakes that, that many places have. Uh, and with the drought this summer, we had to go to stage four in terms of our drought management plan. So the community rose to the challenge of, of our stage four uh, restrictions. Um, lots of great stories and uh, creative conservation ideas. We got to 40% uh, of our peak use. So uh, water use dropped 60% on the coast, which is something to be proud of and, and speaks well to the adaptability around here. So our stage four water restrictions here involve no outdoor water use, which is problematic in terms of resiliency because of course it precludes outdoor growing of food uh, and also raises concerns around um, firefighting, water availability for fire protection. And we did have a large wildfire here at the Seashell Mine this summer. So in terms of conservation initiatives here, uh, we're implementing universal metering uh, across the Sunshine Coast with, with federal and provincial support. Uh, we are looking at a cistern rebate program and reviewing our, our drought management plan. So one of the upsides of the drought this summer was that it was a real learning piece uh, for our community. Uh, and another upside is, is I think we can take pride in how we rose to the challenge. Uh, and it sort of speaks well in terms of moving forward and the adaptations that we're going to have to make in the, in the face of climate change. Most countries in the world use less domestic water per person than British Columbia. We use about two and a half times as much as Europe, and one and a half times as much as the rest of Canada. Both Israel and parts of BC are semi-desert, and yet Israel uses technology to thrive on about one quarter of the water that we use here. There are compelling financial reasons to make water conservation a permanent habit. Most jurisdictions are now needing to treat and filter their drinking water for health security. This means that water is generally pumped, and that creates an embedded energy cost in water. Expansion of water systems is some of the highest capital expenditure in many local government budgets. There's an opportunity to avoid these high costs by having people use less water per person compared to their parents. In that way, more people in a region can flourish with the same overall amount of water supply. Local governments have been leaders in providing incentives to retrofit to low flow toilets and shower heads. An additional 30% or more of our water use can be cut by using rainwater harvesting from roofs for garden water and toilet flushing. Better garden design or weather-based irrigation time clocks allow garden watering to use the minimum amount required. New technologies like these 
to make water conservation easy are becoming mainstream around the world, in regions, in cities, and in agriculture. And water conservation success can be found within the industry as well. In the Capital Regional District, fixture rebates have been phased out and a current focus is on commercial and industrial water conservation. In 2006, the CRD's demand management program expanded to include a specialized ICI, as in industrial, commercial and institutional uh, demand management program or water conservation program. In Victoria, our largest ICI sector is food services. So that's an obvious place for us to start. And commercial kitchens use a lot of water. One of the ways that we've been very effective in decreasing water consumption in that particular sector is through the offering of once through cooling rebates. And what that does is gives money back to any business that is willing to change out their water cooling equipment, which in the case of once through cooling, runs continuously for air cooled. The water savings can be enormous. Water metering and volume-based pricing for potable water has been very effective at rewarding responsible water use. So we know climate change is impacting our water supplies. Increased drought in the summertime has really had an impact. So municipalities that over decades work on their water conservation strategies can really see positive results. This can defer or reduce the need for expensive infrastructure and it can help build resilience to climate change and the drought that comes along with it. And this includes stuff like universal metering, valuing water appropriately, that is pricing, to ensure that the full cost of the water system is supported by water rates, as well as incentive programs. But also a rising awareness on the part of the public and the questioning of the need for green lawns is really starting to take hold. Climate change, with its combination of increased summer drought and increased winter rainfall, will make the need for effective water conservation more urgent than ever. We will need to mimic nature, which stores winter rainfall in soils, in aquifers, in ponds, lakes and watercourses, and has adjusted to use that moisture sparingly to survive summer drought periods. <laughs>